lay allegro. Hence loathed melancholy of Cerebus and blackest midnight born, in Stygian cave forlorn mongst horrid shapes and shrieks and sights unholy, find out some uncouth cell where brooding darkness spreads his jealous wings and the night raven sings there under ebon shades and low-browed rocks as ragged as thy locks in dark cimmerian desert ever dwell but come thou goddess fair and free in heaven you cleap eurofsony and by men heart-easing mirth whom lovely venus at a birth with two sister graces more, To ivy-crowned Bacchus bore, Or whether, as some sager sing, The frolic wind that breathes the spring, Zephyr with aurora playing, As he met her once a-maying, There on beds of violets blue, And fresh-blown roses washed in dew, Filled her with thee a daughter fair, So buxom, blithe, and debonair, Haste thee, nymph, and bring with thee Jest and youthful jollity, Quips and cranks and wanton wiles, Nods and becks and wreathed smiles, Such as hang on Hebe's cheek, And love to live in dimple sleek, Sport that wrinkled care derides, And laughter holding both his sides, Come and trip it as ye go, On the light fantastic toe, And in thy right hand lead with thee The mountain nymph, sweet liberty and if i give thee honour due mirth admit thee of thy crew to live with her and live with thee in unreproved pleasures free to hear the lark begin his flight and singing startle the dull night from his watch-tower in the skies to the till the dappled dawn doth rise then to come in spite of sorrow and at my window bid good morrow through the sweet briar or the vine or the twisted anglantine while the cock with lively din scatters the rear of darkness then and to the stack or the barn door stoutly struts his dames before oft listening how the hounds and horn cheerly rouse the slumbering morn from the side of some moor hill through the high wood echoing shrill sometime walking not unseen by hedgerow elms on hillocks green right against the eastern gate where the great sun begins his state robed in flames and amber light the clouds in thousand liveries dight while the ploughman near at hand whistles o'er the furrowed land and the milkmaid singeth blithe and the mower wets his scythe and every shepherd tells his tale under the hawthorn in the dale straight mine eye hath caught new pleasures whilst the landscape round it measures russet lawns and fallows grey where the nibbling flocks do stray mountains on whose barren breast the labouring clouds do often rest meadows trim with daisies pied shallow brooks and rivers wide towers and battlements it sees bosomed high in tufted trees where perhaps some beauty lies the cernosure of neighboring eyes hard by a cottage chimney smokes from betwixt two aged oaks where cordion and Thr Thr thrysis met or at their savory dinner set of herbs and other country messes which the neat-handed phyllis dresses and then in haste her bower she leaves with thelestes to bind the sheaves or if the earlier season lead to the tanned haycock in the mead sometimes with secure delight the upland hamlets will invite when the merry bells ring round and the jock and rebeck sound to many a youth and many a maid dancing in the checkered shade and young and old come forth to play on a sunshine holly day till the live-long daylight fail then to the spicy nut-brown ale with stories told of many a feat how fairy mab the junkets eat she was pinched and pulled she said and he by friars lath la lanthorn led tells how the drudging goblin sweat to earn his cream bowl duly set when in one night ere glimpse of morn his shadowy flail hath th threshed the corn that ten-day laborers could not end then lies him down the lubber fend and stretched out all the chimney's length basks at the fire his hairy strength and cropful out of doors he flings ere the first cock his matin rings thus done the tales to bed they creep by whispering whines soon lulled asleep towered cities please us then and the busy hum of men where throngs of knights and barons bold in weeds of peace high triumphs hold 
with store of ladies whose bright eyes reign influence and judge the prize of wit or arms while both contend to win her grace whom all commend there let hymen oft appear in saffron robe with taper clear and pomp and feast and revelry with mask and antique pageantry such sights as youthful poets dream on summer's eves by haunted stream then to the well-trod stage and on if johnson's learned sock beyond or sweetest shakespeare fancy's child warble his native wood notes wild and ever against eating cares lap me in soft lydian airs married to immortal verse such as the meeting soul may pierce in notes with many a winding bout of linked sweetness long drawn out with wanton heed and giddy cunning the melting voice through mazes running untwisting all the chains that tie the hidden soul of harmony that orpheus self may heave his head from golden slumber on a bed of heaped elysian flowers and hear such strains as would have won the ear of pluto to have quite set free his half-regained eurydice these delights if thou canst give mirth with thee i mean to live il penseroso hence vain deluding joys the brood of folly without father bred how little you bested or fill the mick fixed mind with all your toys dwell in some idle brain and fancies fond with gaudy shapes possess as thick and numberless as the gay motes that people the sunbeams or likest hovering dreams the fickle pensioners of morpheus train but hail thou goddess sage and holy hail divinest melancholy whose saintly visage is too bright to hit the sense of human sight and therefore to our weaker view or laid with black strayed wisdom's hue black but such as in esteem prince memnon's sister might be seen or that starred Ethiop queen that strove to set her beauties praise above the sea nymphs, and their power is offended, yet thou art higher far descended, the bright haired Vesta long of yore to solitary Saturn bore, his daughter she in Saturn's reign, such mixture was not held a strain, oft in glimmering bowers and glades he met her, and in secret shades of woody Ida's inmost grove, while yet there was no fear of jove come pensive none devout and pure sober steadfast and demure all in a robe of darkest grain flowing with majestic train and sable stole of cypress lawn over thy decent shoulders drawn come keep thy wonted state with even step and musing gait and looks commercing with the skies thy rapt soul sitting in thine eyes there held in holy passion still forget thyself to marble till with a sad leaden downward cast thou fix them on the earth as fast and join with thee calm peace and quiet spare fast that oft with gods doth diet and hears the muses in a ring i round about jove's altar sing and add to these retired leisure that in trim gardens takes his pleasure but first and chiefest with thee bring him that yon soars on golden wing guiding the fiery wheeled throne and the cherub contemplation and the mute silence hissed along, lest Philomel will deign a song, in her sweetest saddest plight, smoothing the rugged brow of night, while Cynthia checks her dragon yoke, gently o'er the accustomed oak, sweet bird that shuns the noise of folly, most musical, most melancholy, the chantress oft the woods among, I woo to hear thy even song, and missing thee I walk unseen, on the dry smooth shaven green to behold the wandering moon riding near her highest noon like one that had been led astray through the heaven's wide pathless way and oft as if her head she bowed stooping through a fleecy cloud oft on a plat of rising ground i hear the far-off curfew sound over some wide watered shore swinging slow with sullen roar or if the air will not permit some still removed place will fit where glowing embers through the new room teach light to counterfeit a gloom far from all resort of mirth save the cricket on the hearth 
or the bellman's drowsy charm to bless the doors from nightly harm, or let my lamp at midnight hour be seen in some high lonely tower, where I may oft outwatch the bear with thrice great Hermes, or unsphere the spirit of Plato to unfold, with wor what worlds or what vast regions hold the immortal mind that hath forsook her mansion in this fleshly nook and of those demons that that are found in fire air flood or underground whose power hath a true consent with planet or with element some time let gorgeous tragedy in sceptred paul come sweeping by presenting thebes or pelops line or the tale of troy divine or what though rare of later age ennobled hath the buskin stage but o oh, sad virgin that thy power might raise Musaeus from his bower, or bid the soul of Orpheus sing, such notes as warbled to the string, drew iron tears down Pluto's cheek, and made hell grant what love did seek, or call up him that left half told the story of Cambuscan old, bold, of Campbell, and of Al Algar Saif, and who had Canis to wife that owned the virtuous ring and glass and of that the wondrous or horse of brass on which the tartar king did ride and if aught else great bards beside in sage and solemn tunes have sung of tourneys and of trophies hung of forests and enchantments drear where more is meant than meets the ear thus night oft see me in thy pale career till civil suited morn appear not tricked and fronced as she was wont with the attic boy to hunt but church sheafed in a comely cloud while rocking winds are piping loud or ushered with a shower still when the gust hath blown his fill ending on the rustling leaves with mite, minute drops from off the eaves and when the sun begins to fling his flaring beams me goddess bring to arched walks of twilight groves and shadows brown that sylvan loves of pine or monumental oak where the rude axe with heaved stroke was never heard the nymphs to daunt or fright them from their hollow hallowed haunt there in close covert by some brook where no profaner eye may look hide me from day's garish eye while the bee with honeyed thigh that at her flowery work doth sing and the waters murmuring with such consort as they keep entice the dewy feathered sleep and let some strange mysterious dream wave at his wings an airy stream of lively portraiture displayed softly on my eyelids laid and as i wake sweet music breathe above about or underneath sent by some spirit to mortals good or the unseen genius of the wood but let my due feet never fail to walk the studious cloisters pale and love the high embowered roof with antique pillars massy proof and storied windows richly dight casting a dim religious light there let the pealing organ blow to the full-voiced choir below in service high and anthems clear as may with sweetness through mine ear dissolve me into ecstasies and bring all heaven before mine eyes and may at last my weary age find out the peaceful hermitage the hairy gown and mossy cell where i may sit and rightly spell of every star that heaven doth show and every herb that sips the dew till old experience do attain to something like prophetic strain these pleasures melancholy give and i with thee will choose to live <laughs>